Yes, hello. Good. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, Maggie. I'm Peter Margetts. Uh, as pointed out, I'm a kidney doctor, and I'm going to talk about uh, scleroderma, systemic sclerosis, and the kidneys. And uh, you can see the list of what we're going to talk about today is kidneys, question mark. Most of you probably have heard of kidneys because it goes into steak and kidney pie. <laughs> so, so we'll start from that level and we'll try and build up a little bit to have a little bit better understanding. And uh, we'll talk about, a little bit about a very rare complication called scleroderma renal crisis, which sounds terrible and it actually is terrible. So down in the bottom corner here is a uh, painting. I, I have to find something interesting to, talk, to put into these talks. And so I had to Google uh, famous people with systemic sclerosis. And this is a painting by a, a German artist, a Swiss German artist by the name of Paul Klee. And I'll get back and talk about him because he's actually quite interesting. Oh, the other thing I have to point out is I, I discovered a button on PowerPoint for transitions. So I've got the slides flipping all the way, all over the place. I couldn't... <laughs> but here's your kidneys. They're, they're, you have two of them. They're, they're sort of closer to your back than your front. Uh, and... Uh, if we go up close to them, you can see that there's a large artery. That's the main artery of your body, the aorta. And there's a branch that goes to the kidneys. And the blood goes through the kidneys, and it comes back into the vena cava. And so what the kidneys do is they filter the blood. So in the outside part of the kidneys here is about a million tiny little microscopic filters. Uh, so the main job of the kidneys is to filter the blood. And what it filters out turns into urine, and it comes down these tubes here, ends up in your bladder, and then comes out in the toilet. That's the part that you guys probably have more uh, familiar, familiarity with. So as I said, kidneys are important. Uh, they are uh, very uh, complex and important, and I always say uh, kidney doctors have to be some of the smartest doctors in the hospital because we have a very difficult organ to understand. So they, they uh, uh, filter the blood and they remove toxins. And we need a, a way to measure this. And one of the things I'm going to talk about is a blood test we do called creatinine. Creatinine is an enzyme. It comes from the muscles. Everybody has it in the blood, but it's filtered out well by the kidneys. So if the kidneys aren't filtering the blood very well, this number starts to go up. So this is a, one of the primary ways we know that kidneys aren't working. I'm getting older than Dr. Khalidi, so I have to put my glasses on. <laughs> Although, is he still here? Because I still have my hair. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. Oh, Although mine turned gray. So, um, so our kidneys also get rid of salt and water. That's what comes out in the urine. Uh, the kidneys are also very interesting because they make a hormone called renin. So if you slow down the blood flow to the kidneys, they start to make this hormone called renin, which makes your blood pressure go up. So they're a main sensing organ in the body to tell you about blood pressure. And I'm going to get back to that part of it too. So here's uh, that kidney again. And we're going to blow up a tiny little bit of the outside of the kidney called the cortex. These are the little filters. They look like little balls of uh, thread. And in Latin, a ball of thread is called a glomus. So these are glomeruli. And this is where all the filtration happens. The blood comes into these and goes out. And the urine is made in this little space right here. The urine then goes down through these little tubules and eventually comes out of the kidney in the form of urine. This is the other important part of the kidney right here. This is a blood vessel. So scleroderma, uh, the main effect in the kidney and the main disease we see, affects the blood vessels of the kidney, causes uh, damage to the blood vessels. They close off, and they close off blood flow to the kidneys. Uh, systemic sclerosis can also involve the interstitial bits of the tissue here and can cause scarring in them, just like it causes scarring in other organs. And very rarely we see, uh, in some cases, it can cause inflammation in the little filters of the kidney, a condition called glomerulonephritis. But I'm going to concentrate on this thing, scler scleroderma renal crisis. And to let you know sort of how this can present, I've got a patient. This is a fellow I saw some years ago at the Hamilton General Hospital. He came in with headaches, blurred vision. He couldn't understand what was going on. And the nurse took his blood pressure, and it's 228 over 125. So that's why we call it a, a, a crisis. This fellow is in uh, dire straits with this. Uh, 
Uh, he, interestingly, about two years ago, he saw one of the rheumatologists. None of them that have been in this room, but he had Raynaud's phenomena, and a lot of you will understand what that is. It's the, the blue and white discoloration of the fingers, especially in the cold. It can be quite painful. The rheumatologist did a wonderful workup, said, I couldn't really figure out what, what was going on. Uh, and then about three months before he came into hospital, he had terrible chest pain, burning chest pain. So bad, he actually went to a heart doctor, and he got a a study of the heart to see if there's a blockage in the arteries, which there wasn't. And eventually they said, well, you just have this terrible esophagitis, which when we start to put all these things together, we can start to say, it looks like he's got this thing called scleroderma. When I saw him in the emergency room, even from the other side of the room, I could tell that he had obvious skin changes in his face and his hands of uh, sclerodactyly or systemic sclerosis. Uh, and interestingly, I went up to him and I said, well, how long have you had scleroderma? And he'd never heard of it. So that was, this was the first presentation, the first time he'd been diagnosed with it. Uh, his creatinine, that's the blood test I mentioned, was 228. Normal was 90. So the kidneys were not filtering the blood very well. There's also evidence that his red blood cells in his blood were breaking down. So this is a, a definitely a significant emergency. Watch this one. Cool. <laughs> Don't stay up late playing with your power cable. Bad things happen. So this is a, a normal blood vessel in the kidney. You can see these are the tubes, and this is one of those filters. And this is a normal blood vessel, and it's lined with these cells called endothelial cells. And you can see how wide open and all the blood can flow through there nicely. Somebody with this uh, condition called scleroderma renal crisis, it affects the little cells that line the blood vessels, and the whole blood vessel gets swollen up like that, and now you can see why the blood is not getting through to the rest of the kidney. So the blood vessels are closing off and preventing blood getting through to the rest of the kidney. So of course what's going to happen is the kidney is going to complain, and it's going to start to send out a message to put your blood pressure up. So what we did for this fellow, he was put in a bed, uh, he was uh, intensely monitored, he was given intravenous blood pressure medication to bring his blood pressure down, and we started him on a special blood pressure medication we call an ACE inhibitor, or an angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitor, and this specifically blocks the action of that hormone I mentioned, renin. So it's very effective at bringing down the blood pressure and eventually helping to preserve the kidneys overall and keep people alive. Uh, unfortunately, his creatinine continued to go up, which means his kidney function is going down. And we actually had to start him on a treatment called hemodialysis, which replaces the kidney function. And he was on dialysis from July to November, so uh, about five months. And in fact, uh, in November when I saw him on dialysis, uh, this was a few years ago, he told me that he was starting to make more urine. We did some blood work, and lo and behold, his kid kidneys were starting to recover. So uh, it sounds miraculous, but uh, in fact, in this particular condition, we do see this occasionally, this late recovery of kidney function. We stopped his dialysis. Uh, he actually met up with his uh, estranged wife, and they got back together. Uh, uh, I don't know if it, it may have been me who uh, helped with that. <laughs> he, he, since uh, his uh, ex-wife lived out in, in uh, Nova Scotia, so he moved away, and I have not heard what, how, how it went for him since then. <laughs> Hopefully well. So we, I mentioned it's a rare condition. We see it in about 10 to 15 percent, probably close to 10 percent of people who have diffuse systemic sclerosis. That means a more serious form of uh, systemic sclerosis and a smaller number in patients who have more limited uh, sclerosis. Uh, it's marked by severe hypertension, high blood pressure. Occasionally we'll see somebody with normal blood pressure with this condition, kidney failure, and I mentioned that breakdown of red blood cells that associate comes along with it. About half the patients we see with this condition, even if we treat them as aggressively as we can, about half of them will end up needing dialysis. But of those, about a third will actually recover and be able to come off dialysis. And some even uh, up to a year after we start. And definitely, uh, it's, it's seen in patients who have worse uh, disease, which means more rapidly progressive disease, more diffuse disease, and other organ involvement. Here's the good news. This is a, a researcher from, she was in Pittsburgh, but she's now in Washington, Virginia, Steen, and she's done a lot of work on this particular condition. And what she did in a group of patients she followed, she, said, she just said, um, patients with this condition, what's causing them to die? And what she showed is early on, uh, most of the death was caused by the scleroderma renal crisis. As we introduce medications to get better blood pressure control, the incidence of dying from scleroderma renal crisis has gone way down. 
So uh, we've been very, very successful, or others have been very successful at treating this condition and allowing people to live with it. What's gone up has been some of the lung conditions, which uh, seem to be uh, terrible uh, complications of scleroderma at the present time. Here's some of the risk factors. Just jumping down the list, so worst disease, if you have the lungs involved or the heart involved, you're more likely to have uh, developed this condition. And uh, um, the other interesting thing is prednisone. I don't know if anybody here has been on prednisone. It's an immune suppressing drug. We don't use it as much anymore, but occasionally people have sort of an overlap condition and uh, have other reasons we'll put them on it. But it actually increases your risk of developing this particular condition. And I'm just going to jump ahead. <clears throat> so I mentioned treatments. Uh, as this gentleman had, we use uh, intravenous blood pressure medications in a monitor setting. This is an emergency. We really need to treat these patients very aggressively. Uh, we use this medication, the ACE inhibitor, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor, and um, we just push the dose up until the blood pressure com comes under control. And because of that, uh, some of these patients end up on dialysis. Uh, Maureen spoke about randomized control trial or trials for, for these drugs. We've never done anything like that. All we know is that before we had these ACE inhibitors being used, a lot of people would die from this condition. Once we had uh, ACE inhibitors and used them widely, a lot fewer people die from this condition, so nobody's had the courage to actually do a randomized control trial. We're just going to push on and keep using those, that particular class of medication. So most of you have not had scleroderma renal crisis, but a lot of people with scleroderma or systemic sclerosis would like to know how to prevent it. And unfortunately, we don't know exactly why, but I'm going to uh, provide my advice. And the one thing I would suggest is that everybody with systemic sclerosis should have one of these at home, a blood pressure cuff, and should, should monitor their blood pressure once or twice a week. And, uh, and that's just to, to detect early changes in your blood pressure, which may be early signs of this condition occurring. And especially if you're quite sick with scleroderma, I think this is a, a logical uh, uh, way to go. Uh, the blood pressure cuffs at the pharmacy work just as well. Um, and I think you should call your doctor if your blood pressure is consistently over 140, over 90. Do it a couple of times over a couple of days, but if it's staying up, you should probably get in touch with your doctor. We do know that uh, these class of drugs, ACE inhibitors, there's another class similar to that called ARBs or angiotensin receptor blockers. They treat this disease. They're wonderful at treating this disease. Interestingly, all the studies we have show that it does not prevent the disease. And in fact, people who are on this particular type of drug are more likely to have a worse outcome if they develop the scleroderma re renal crisis than if they're not on it. And I think the reason for that is it kind of masks it. So the disease can progress slowly over time. You're on a drug that helps to treat it, but it doesn't completely treat it. And, it, and by the time you present with this problem, you're too far gone and you end up needing dialysis and bad uh, outcomes. So I think if you do develop hypertension, uh, we should probably pick different classes of drugs to use in this particular population to help keep the blood pressure down. And I mentioned this uh, prednisone. It would seem to be uh, a risk factor for developing this condition. Sometimes we need it because it's the only drug that works, but if, if there's any way to avoid it, I think we can, especially in higher doses. Lower doses do not seem to be such a high risk for it. And here's the, uh, here's the, the truth, the uh, outcomes of patients who have developed this particular condition. Uh, here's some larger studies and uh, smaller studies, but you can see that about half of the patients are ending up on dialysis, uh, some of them just temporarily and then some of them permanently. Uh, and then the mortality or the risk of dying from this is actually still pretty high in the 25 to 30 percent range. Those are some of the older studies. I think we're doing better nowadays. Uh, this is just one slide for a few patients we've had in our, in our uh, hospital who have gone on with, with the um, scleroderma, renal crisis, and end-stage kidney disease. Uh, who have gone on to renal transplant, they actually do fairly well. Their outcomes are fairly similar to uh, the general population of patients undergoing a renal, uh, kidney transplant. Uh, and in fact, there's this one small study that suggested the skin scores uh, improved after the kidney uh, transplant, um, for probably because of some of the medications that were started. So I'm going to summarize. The most common renal complication of scleroderma is this renal crisis. It is uh, still a very rare complication. Um, and I think that uh, early diagnosis and treatment is crucial. 
I'm basing that on no clear evidence, but I really feel that that's the most likely or best course to, to take is to keep an eye on your blood pressure on an ongoing basis. Uh, it, when, if you do develop this, this uh, drug is essential in bringing down the blood pressure and helping to pr protect the kidneys. And as I mentioned, some patients will, with, who develop this actually end up on dialysis, uh, but thankfully a few of them will actually be able to recover and come off dialysis. Now back to Paul Klee. So here's a he was a um, German, Swiss German fellow uh, around the turn of the century, and th these are some of his paintings. He was a cubist, whatever that means, or a surrealist. Uh, I think they're, they're paintings that kids could do, but in fact, he was very famous for them. <laughs> and um, uh, I, I was actually at the Guggenheim in New York, and they had a display of them. And they're, they're actually quite, they're small, tiny little paintings, but they're, they're actually quite stunning because they're very beautiful colors. He was uh, Jewish, and he did, uh, and some of his artwork was called uh, degenerative art, and was displayed by the Nazis because they thought people like himself and Matisse were weird artists, and and that shouldn't be allowed in in the uh, Third Reich. So he, that's him being displayed as a degenerate artist. And here's him later in life, and you can see the pretty cl classic changes in the hand and the face. So he developed uh, scleroderma later in his life. Uh, as a young man, he said he developed he. He discovered colors. He went to uh, art, um, Algeria on a painting tour, and here's some of the beautiful colors that he put into some of his paintings after he's there. Later in life, he, he struggled with the, the um, end stage with um, with the scleroderma, and some of his paintings became uh, darker and, and a little more stark. 